welcome to the Cardinals Rewind main event special podcast where we break down the Cardinals game from the previous week and of course with the Cardinals being on Thursday night football last night they played the Seahawks we're breaking down just this game and we'll do a preview next week uh, for that game but we wanted to break this game uh, down while it was still fresh in everybody's mind obviously being Thursday night so the Cardinals went into Seattle last night on a short week of course for Thursday night football and They have a disappointing loss. They fall 28-21 to the Seattle Seahawks last night, and they fall to 6-4 on the year. At the same time, we would all be shocked if we went into this season and said Cardinals will be 6-4 at this point in the season. We all would have taken it, and it's amazing to read the headlines today and everybody on Twitter saying this team's no good. We'll get into that as we go on here. Of course, I'm Stephen McCollum. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Thanks for listening, uh, and as we break down this game a little bit and uh, find out what went right for the Cardinals and what, more importantly, went wrong for the Cardinals uh, and what we've been seeing here throughout the year and if they're improving and if they are, in fact, a good team that people are questioning today. So due to last night's game, of course, Thursday night, well, I got the score right. I said 28-21 on the preview podcast uh, the other day. And it ended up being 28-21. It's just I picked the wrong team. Seattle came in as a desperate team. They were losing two straight. Russell Wilson has not been playing well. Their defense had not been playing well. They were a desperate team. And when good teams become desperate, they are certainly somebody to watch out for. Uh, I did say also that that was my fear going into this game. I thought the Cardinals could win it because of their momentum going into that game on Thursday night. I was worried about the travel to Seattle. Thursday night road teams typically don't fare well. But the Red, uh, the Seattle Seahawks got back uh, Carlos Hyde as a running back. And that was the difference in the game. Besides the fact the Cardinals came out, like we've seen a few times this year, completely slow, completely unprepared. And in this game, it was even weirder. Lots of discipline issues that hasn't cost them before. And man, did it ever cost them in this game. So let's get into it. Of course, Kyler last night, we always talk about him. Kyler Murray, great young quarterback, second year. He's got something special. We've talked about it a lot. Second play of the game or in that time frame, he gets a hit, goes down. He gets dinged up in that first quarter. You could tell he was grimacing. He was holding his shoulder. He did fight through it the rest of the game, but it looked to be bothering him the rest the rest of the game. It absolutely did, especially in that second half as it got colder. Uh, he wasn't on the field as much. We're going to talk about time of possession coming up here. Seattle Seahawks kept the ball out of the Cardinals' offensive hands, and Kyler, st- Kyler stiffened up. He was missing uh, open receivers and passes that he normally makes, and he was missing them in the second half especially. He started underthrowing. He started overthrowing receivers, and he wasn't running at all. At all. And it wasn't because the Seahawks had him so bottled up. There were lanes for him to take off, but he was not doing it. Probably worried about that shoulder. And, you know, I was reading today, of course, all throughout that people were saying the Seattle defense bottled him up and he had nowhere to go. But there are distinct plays in this game, if you were watching, that showed he had lanes to step up and pick up three, four yards, and he refused to do it. There was even one opportunity where he could go 10 to 15 yards probably, and he refused to do it, uh, probably because of the shoulder. Kyler Murray ends up at 29 passes, 42 attempts, 269 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, which was huge in this game for him. It kept the Cardinals in this game. It's fantastic. This game rolled out just kind of what we all thought it would. It's just the Cardinals weren't able to get their last game magic. They burned it all in the Bills game. They weren't able to do that. But look, there's a lot of negatives in this game that we're going to get into. We don't like to harp on the negatives, but there's a lot of things we need to talk about. And we've talked about before that are still rearing their ugly heads. We need to get these uh, things improved. Cardinals do. Us at home need to see it improve. That's what I mean by we. (laughs) So, I mean, if I was in the locker room, I'd fix it right now. Right. So, I mean, one positive is despite how the Cardinals played with all the penalties, with all the idiotic penalties, they had a chance to tie this game late. They had the ball last. They could have driven the field and scored touchdown or go for two and win the game or go into overtime. They fought to the end, even with all the issues we're going to talk about here on the negative side. They were in this game. 
Cardinals traditionally would not have been in this game. So I don't understand the negativity toward this team. Yeah, it's a letdown they lost last night. Yes, they wish they would have played better. A lot of things went against them in this game. I know a lot of people were talking about the referees today. I'm not one to blame the referee. There were, you know, issues all game long where calls were going against the Cardinals that were questionable. Absolutely. But good teams get past that. Good teams fight through that, and they still pull out the victories. It didn't happen last night for the Cardinals, right? So let's get into the negatives. That's what I just wanted to say that positive before we get into this because I might lose my mind here in a minute. I have been thinking about this all morning. Last night, the game ended, and I was tired, and I was like, I'm just going to bed. I didn't want to think about it. I didn't want to deal on it. I didn't want to be up all night thinking about it, so I just went to bed. And I woke up this morning, and the first thoughts out of my head were just the undisciplined play, the play calling issues that we talked about last week, and we've talked about a couple times. Just It's just the Cardinals are a good team. They are improving. They're leaps and bounds above where they were last year and the year before, but these issues are still creeping up. And I'm willing to give – I've seen people say Cliff Kingsbury needs to be fired. That's just absolutely ridiculous. Yes, he has play-calling missteps. So does Bill Belichick. So does most coaches in the league. Would you rather have Cliff Kingsbury today or would you rather have Matt Nagy for the Bears? Perspective, people. They're 6-4. and four. They're playing well uh, most games. They have let down games. They're a young team. Their coach is learning on the fly. Of course, their quarterback is learning. Injuries galore on that defense. Come on. Uh, let's, let's keep it in perspective here. But play calling does continue to be a head scratcher. I tweeted out after that first drive last night. Three passes on the first three plays. Really? Just absolutely disappointing. Set the tone early by going three and out, especially when the Seahawks drove down the field like they did and scored that touchdown. They had 12 plays, 75 yards to open up this game, running the ball down the Cardinals' defense throat. Cardinals' defense was getting to uh, Russell Wilson. They got sacks. First play of the game for the defense was a sack. But 12 plays, 75 yards. The Seahawks take six minutes, 15 seconds off the play clock. What do the Cardinals do? Three plays, three yards. A three whopping yards. But it's not just that. The Cardinals were passing the ball. Three-yard pass, first play. Passing complete. Passing complete on third down. Punt. How anticlimactic can you be? We expected them to come out on fire. Number one rated offense in the league, and they come out and just lay a dud. Don't even try to run the ball on that play. All right, fine. They punt the ball back. Disappointing. We're all disappointed. We wanted to see more on that first drive. Especially, I wanted to see more especially. I wanted to see a response to that Seahawks uh, first drive. They punt the ball. Seattle gets the ball back. Defense, awesome. Three plays, two yards for the Seahawks. Force a punt. Here's the difference, though. The, the Cardinals' first three plays, three yards, took a total of 39 seconds off the clock. The Seahawks get the ball back. Three plays, two yards. Guess how much time they took off the clock? Two minutes and nine seconds. Even when the Car even when the Seahawks did nothing, they still took time off the clock. Whereas the Cardinals did nothing and nothing at all. We're going to talk about that in time of possession. This is an amazing stat that we're going to see here. And this is the difference between these two teams. It's amazing. And Cliff Kingsbury needs to figure out this time of possession deal and these short drives. So they get back on the Seahawks drive here. Three plays, two yards, as I said. Two minutes, nine seconds. Second drive of the game. Run for no game. Russell Wilson actually fumbled this ball. Uh, and then yeah, they recovered it. So it wasn't really a run. But they recovered it. No gain. Then they had a five-yard run. Russell Wilson scrambled up the middle for a five-yard run. Negative six-yard sack. That, of course, is why they only had two yards. Uh, great. Isaiah Simmons. We're going to talk about him on the positive side here. Fantastic. Gets his first sack. Awesome play there here. Seahawks have to punt the ball, but they still get two minutes off the clock. Cardinals get the ball back. Drive down the field. Fantastic. They rebound, right? No, they don't. I'm just kidding with you. They get three plays, four yards, two minutes, 12 seconds off the clock. Again, we're expecting more at the beginning of the game. Second drive of the thing for the Cardinals after holding the Seahawks to a punt after that long first drive. And the Cardinals come out. 
hey, they at least ran the ball the first time. Three-yard run right off the bat, Kenyon Drake. Then what do they do? You guys know what they did because it's what the Cardinals do. Three-yard run, had some success. Hey, let's screw it up. Let's try to run the. Let's try to pass the ball. Kyler Murray sacked. Second and seven. Third and seven. We're going to talk about this. Penalty. False start. Dan Arnold. Great. First penalty of the game. We don't know what's to come, but it's obviously a sign to come now. We know that now. Then what do the Cardinals do? Third and 12, because now they're even farther back, but they were going to pass anyway. One yard pass. Does nothing. Larry Fitzgerald. Punt the ball again. Just. You had an opportunity Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, even Thursday morning to wake up and put a play call together for these first first two drives and put something together to do something special. And that's what they came up with. Five passing plays and one running play. That's what they come up with. Where is the ingenuity? Where is the fiery fireness coming out in this game? Just lackluster. The coaching, the play call set the tone for this game of we're not ready to play. We're just going to mo mojo through this and uh, see what we can do. It's just disappointing, and it needs to change. We've talked about it too much on here, and he, Kurt Cliff Kingsbury needs to figure out how to get this team going, get creative on his play calls early because they punt the ball off after that, right? Seattle gets the ball back. Defense does their job. Three plays, six yards. Another two minutes off the clock for Seattle. Cardinals get the ball back. Eight plays, 50 yards. They have it in them, but here's the difference. Eight plays, 50 yards. Cardinals go down to score a touchdown to tie it up, 7-7. Seven, seven. So first two drives, five plays or passes, one play is a run. They go eight plays, 50 yards. What's the difference? What's the difference? I'm sure you guys can figure this out. I, I'm, not being, uh, I'm not being secretive here. My sarcasm is not being secretive. First play, six-yard run. Murray scrambles right end uh, to get six yards. Three-yard run, Kenyon Drake, right guard. Three-yard run. Three-yard run again, Kenyon Drake up the middle to the Seattle 38 on third and one. Four-yard run, Kenyon Drake, right end. Picks up the first down, first and 10. Finally, they're moving the ball on the ground. Wow, let's keep doing it. Nope. Seven-yard pass, Kenyon Murray. I'm sorry, Kyler Murray, excuse me, pass short, let's uh, Hopkins. Okay, it worked, seven yard pass. But you started running the ball, you got him up a little bit, you get the thing. Then there's an incomplete pass to Kenyon Drake. Then, awesome, 25 yard pass, deep to the tight end. Williams, beautiful play call, 25 yard pass. But see how it works? You come out and you throw the ball three times, you're out of there because it's not complete. You go out there, you run once, throw the ball twice, incomplete, you're out of there again. They set it up with the run game. They got the first down on the run game and it opened up the passing game a little bit. 25-yard pass to Mert Williams. Touchdown Cardinals. Kenyon Drake runs it up the middle on uh, first and goal at the Seattle 2 and score. Running is what they needed to do early in this game. It takes them till the end of the first quarter. It takes them to the third possession on offense to figure out that running's what it is. We all know sitting at home, they needed to we're come out here and set the tone on the run game and not just pass the ball, but apparently the people that make the big bucks felt like they needed to run it and they did nothing. Just disappointing start, but they finally got it down right, down 7 nothing. They get the ball back, go down and score 7-7. Seven, seven. Fantastic. Finally, we're seeing some stuff. Then the Cardinals defense, who's been playing well the last two drives, gives up 10 plays, 75 yards for the uh, Seahawks, right? If you notice the trend here, we're going to get more into that because then it's just trading back and forth and we're going to get into some of the plays down here. So, but some other negatives here real quick is this wasn't a balanced ball game at all. It's what I'm complaining about. You guys want to hear, want to hear just absolute disgusting fact here. Is that just disgusting? 42 pass attempts by Kyler Murray. 42. Including Kyler Murray, including his runs, Cardinals had 18 total rushing attempts. 18, 42 passes. You're not winning a football game, especially against a team like Seattle with that big disparity. 
I get Seattle's defense if both their cornerbacks were out. I get their defense has been weak. I get they have a good running game. But the drive where they had success, they were running the ball, and then it set up the pass. You go away from that on another punt in the second quarter, right? This is an eight-play, 43-yard uh, drive for the Cardinals where they have to punt it. Look at this. Starts off, minus six-yard sack, 18-yard pass, minus 10-yard penalty, Holding by uh, Cardinals offensive line. Five-yard pass, 13-yard pass, five-yard penalty, another false start. 11-yard pass, two-yard run, pass incomplete, pass incomplete, punt. When you live and die by the pass, it shuts down those drives quickly. I understand there's penalties on there. Just an example I'm throwing out there. On another one, right? Just shuts it down. That's all I'm saying. But 42 pass attempts, here's the thing. Without Murray's three runs, or I'm sorry, five runs, they had 13 running attempts with Kenyon Drake and Chase. 13! That's just not the way to go. Even if your run game's going nowhere, you've got to give them the running ball, running the running back the ball so it goes forward on there. It just wasn't a good offensive pass scheme for this Cardinals I understand the thought process behind it if I dig down to it I just don't agree with it like I said I get the cornerbacks were out for Seattle I get they're they're really good against the run actually their front seven is good against the run I get that you got to show it you got to do it when you're just going to pass the ball it's easier on the defense and the Cardinals set it up for it and as I said with only 13 runs uh, the offense for the Cardinals did nothing. The, the running backs did nothing for the Cardinals. How are they expected to do anything with only 13 touches on the ground? You don't expect them to do anything. Ridiculous. Kenyon Drake, 11 carries, 29 yards. He did have that one-yard touchdown we talked about. Chase Edmonds, two runs, two carries for 13 yards. I get it. I get it. Seattle's defense shuts down the run. You wanted to avoid it. It just became a disparaging uh, game, a disproportionate game. Seattle's defense knew what was coming. Here's the other side of it. We're going to talk about, and we get to time of possession. Our defense, Cardinals defense was on that field for a long, long, long time. Because when the Cardinals go out there and go three plays and out, they waste no time off the clock with passing it. And defense gets no rest, especially early in that game. We'll talk about that when we get to time of possession. If you notice, I keep harping on time of possession and how we're going to get to it because it's just a disgusting stat in this game. It's where the Cardinals went wrong. They threw the ball too much and it cost them. It cost them a lot. Even if even if the running game did nowhere, at least it established it and they did refuse to go do it. And it's just bad. It's just bad game management. It's bad setup. And they didn't adjust it all in the second half. They stuck with that offensive mindset of throw, throw, throw. Granted, they're only down by seven. I get that. Just would have liked to have seen it. See what could have happened then, right? As we go forward. Uh, anyway, I'm kind of fired up. As you can tell, so the running game was stifled. Another negative. The negative that's driving everybody batty. Let's touch on this. Let's talk about it because we have to. This is one of those conversations that like you have to like tell somebody some bad news. Like, hey, your grandma died. But you, you don't want to. So you kind of like slow roll it. and You don't want to talk about it. But you know you have to. It's pretty much where we are right now. It's pretty much where we are right now. We have to talk about penalties. Nobody wants to. Hasn't really been a factor. We've talked about it before where they, they've had a lot of penalties. Some of them killed drives early in the season. They kind of fixed that side of it where there was no like drive killers anymore. I'm all of a sudden on the theme of killing grandma or here. I'm using the word killing a lot out, out of nowhere. I don't know where that's coming from. Poor grandma. Everybody call, call your grandmas and check on them if they're still around. Because I'm getting some weird vibes over here. 10 penalties, 115 yards for the Cardinals. It's a record amount of yardage on penalties, by the way. There's a bunch of records out there. The Cardinals broke with 115 yards. Four penalties were specific killers to the Cardinals in this game. And this is where it differs. Before you get a holding penalty, which would, would stop a drive, but it didn't kill the game for him. You can 
specifically point to these four penalties that could have probably led the Cardinals down to the defeat. Four penalties. This is undisciplined football. They're not they're they're undisciplined to a certain extent, but this was more than usual. It was egregious on this play calling on this uh, penalties, and it was bad. It is unacceptable for them to come into this game with the mindset they were in. The penalties stood out and probably cost them the game. Of course, the first one. We'll just go into the end of the half one here. We'll we'll skip to the end of the half one. Patrick Peterson. The Seattle Seahawks have the ball. Like collect my thoughts here. Patrick Peterson. Uh, Cardinals are driving down the. I mean, sorry, the Seahawks are driving down the field. They, uh, you know, end of the half here. Cardinals start off. Uh, I'm sorry. The Seahawks start off with a five-yard penalty, a false start against um, Lapati. Le- then they have a four-yard penalty, false start. They're at their own Seattle eight right now. They started their Seattle thirteen. They moved back to the eight with two penalties. They throw a C. Uh, then then they're at the Seattle four after that second penalty, three-yard pass. We're second and sixteen now at the Seattle seven. They do a ten-yard pass. Second and 16, complete a 10-yard pass. Then they're third and six at the Seattle 17. They're backed up to their own end zone, folks. Seven-yard run, first down. First and 10 at the Seattle 24. Half's coming to an end, right? Cardinals are just, you know, they can't get off the field. Eight-yard pass. Second and two at the Seattle 32. 13-yard run. Then first and 10 at the Seattle 45. They've gotten all the way out to their 45-yard line. They still have 55 yards to go to get in the end zone. They have, what, 20, 30 yards to get a field goal to end the half here. Russell Wilson drops back, throws the ball deep to Metcalf. Patrick Peterson mugs him. I mean, that's illegal in uh, 42 states and three, uh, you know, Three, three other countries. Just absolutely mugs him. Pass interference. 46 yard penalty. 46 yard penalty. So they go from the Seattle 45. With 20 seconds to go in the game. And now they're with 11 seconds. Well, 20 seconds left. They're at their first and goal at the Arizona nine. This is the end of the half. Wilson Wilson steps back, pass incomplete. Cardinals defense holds them. And so they kick the field goal to go into halftime. Just disappointing. Just killer. You could have gone into the half. You could have gone into halftime. 13 to seven. And instead, you're going down. You're going in 16 to 7. It's three points. That's a big difference. You've given the Seattle Seahawks momentum at the end of the half. 46 yard pass and a preference penalty on a ball that wasn't going to get caught. Can't happen, guys. But all right, fine. 16 7, halftime, they go in. Then the second half penalties. You guys ready for this? Buckle up, folks. Here we go. Roller coaster ride, baby. It's not a good one either. So, come out. Cardinals score on the first drive of the third down. It's like, wow. They they come out, 11 plays, 56 yards. They score 16-14. They kick off. Seattle gets the ball. Right, go down the field, eight plays, 67 yards, make a 23-14 with their touchdown. There's a 10-yard penalty on this one uh, on Seattle. They do have an offensive holding. They get backed up. But then they get to it, and there's a big play on this drive, 20-yard pass. Russell Wilson throws to Tyler Lockett. This is where it all goes sideways, right? Tyler Lockett catches it, gets tackled weirdly, gets up. 
penalty, Arizona. Drake or Patrick Totting, 15 yards. He's throwing, he's throwing hands at DK Metcalf. DK, DK Metcalf throwing hands back. Referees only penalized at any at, at a minimum. This should have been offsetting penalties. But it's still inexcusable. Third and seven. You stop them from driving down the field. You stop them on third down. You just defense get off the field. And let's get the punt going. Nope. 15-yard taunting penalty on Drake or Patrick. Regardless if it should have been offsetting. Regardless of anything else. Should be in that situation. So instead of punting the ball. or going, I'm sorry. Going for a 50-yard field goal is what it would have been. To attempt. Instead of going for a field goal. That even if they made. At least you held them to three. Right? But he could have missed it. So instead of that. 15-yard penalty. Unexcusable penalty. Seattle gets the ball back, which then leads to a touchdown for the Seahawks. So even if they would have made that field goal, four-point swing, they get a touchdown right off the bat after that penalty. Just unexcusable. There's nothing to say. Drake Kirkpatrick is a veteran on this team. Shouldn't have done been in that. Shouldn't have, shouldn't even have been in that situation. You stopped them on third down. They were punting the ball or going for a field goal. I'm sorry, going for a field goal, and you do that 15 and you keep them going, and they score a touchdown off of it. Just give up free points to a team when you when your offense is struggling, right? So that penalty just gross and disgusting to see, right? Cost some points. If you notice this, these two penalties I've talked about so far has cost them points. Unnecessary points that shouldn't have happened, but because of stupidity on players' parts, that's what it was. Absolute stupidity on their parts. Shouldn't have happened. They should be more disciplined. These are veterans on the team, and they shouldn't be making those plays. Led to Seattle points. Which, if you do the math, led to 10 points. Cardinals lost 28-21. Do the math yourself, right? Then the next penalty that cost them. Kyler Murray. Steps back. Gets the snap. Steps back. I don't know if there's a miscommunication. His running back, it looks like a screenplay. Jamal Adams is coming after him. He just looks to his left and throws the ball to nobody. Ten yards short of the uh, line. He's still in the pocket. Intentional grounding. Backs the Cardinals up, of course. So this is how this drive starts. They get the ball back. Seattle punts it to begin the fourth quarter. Cardinals get the ball back. They're at the Arizona 14. They're backed up to their own their 14-yard line after the uh, punt. Kyler Murray drops back, throws the ball to his left. No receivers there. It's 10 yards short of the line. He's not out of the pocket. Intentional grounding, 12-yard penalty where they're at. Second and 22 now. They're backed up. They're at the Arizona 2-yard line. Kyler Murray completes a short pass up the middle. Oh, no. Penalty flag comes out. J.R. Sweezy, offensive holding, which for those of you that watched the game and didn't know that anyway, any penalty in the end zone turns into a safety. Cardinals give up two points. Inexcusable penalties. Kyler Murray should know the rule by now. He's been called for several intentional grounding penalties this year. Offensive linemen should know you don't hold. It's getting his way, but you don't hold in the end zone. So those are four penalties that happened in this game that hurt the Cardinals for points. Do the math. 12 points off of four penalties. Cardinals lost by seven. Do the math. We've seen Cardinals have a lot of penalties. We've seen a lot of that stuff. We've seen them kill drives with it. We've never seen this type of undisciplined play with the Cardinals this year. We haven't. It was shocking to see. It was disgusting to see. It's infuriating to see. This is why I'm not a coach in the NFL, by the way, everybody, because I would have had a heart attack on the sideline yelling about these plays. 
It's inexcusable. And these are veteran people. Jay Sweezy's a veteran offensive lineman. Pat Peterson, a veteran cornerback. Drake Kirkpatrick, veteran cornerback. Kyler Murray, second year with several intentional grounding penalties. He knows better. How does he not know better? But just because I like to torture myself. Let's watch the uh, intentional grounding play by Kyler Murray. Just because my heart can't take it. Let's do it. Points. We've started to, to find a little bit of their rhythm. Murray was looking to try and they're going to throw a flag. He was trying to set up a screen for Dan Arnold. Jamal Adams had pressure. So if you watch that play, we'll go back and watch it again. And, and I'll narrate it over uh, points. Fox voice there. So he gets to, the snap. Watch the tight end. Goes to block him there, Jamal Adams. And then he runs off. Instead of stopping Murray to get the ball, he runs down the field. Flag. He was it's a miscommunication a screen for Dan on the running back. Jamal Adams or was pressure. it Kyler Murray not realizing the situation? And we'll see if they're gonna throwing the ball down because he saw Jamal Adams coming his way. Intentional grounding. We don't know Offense. because, Number of one. course, carries the loss of down. you know, we're not, we don't know what the play call Second actually down. was, things like that. That's well, inexcusable. That when Jamal Adams that came point. in, you know, that co that communication just can't happen. Miscommunication can't happen. But it happened. It backed him up. To be honest with you, that's not the end of the world. Can't happen. Back him up. But it sets up this this scene here, right? So, like I said, they're down at their two yard line, backed up against the uh, end zone there. Outside the pocket, did not get it back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Pereira says it's the right call from back in LA. Here's a flag. Completed across the, the middle. Of course, holding on J.R. Sweezy there in the end zone. I mean, technically, it's where the penalty starts. You can make an argument that it started outside of the end zone, but it was close. You can't review it. Safety. So, as I said, do the math. Four penalties leads to 12 points for the Seahawks. You cannot do that against a team like this. You can't do that against a bad team in the NFL. If you did that against the Jets, they would be in the game. And they did it against the Seahawks. Unexcusable. The other penalties I want to talk about here. We spent enough time on that. False start penalties for the Cardinals. Dan Arnold had one on the second drive of the game. Justin Pugh had one. DJ Humphreys had one. Another offensive lineman had one. They had four or five false start penalties. Here's my question. There was no crowd in Seattle. It wasn't that loud in there. Not like it normally is. Did they they couldn't hear the they couldn't hear Murray yelling hike? They couldn't they couldn't see the ball there and they it was too loud in there that they didn't see it. Inexcusable. Absolutely inexcusable. Zero fans in the stadium. False start penalties. It just tells you their their head wasn't in this game. They were, whether it be it was a short week, they had to travel. That's a disadvantage for them. It's not an excuse, but it's a disadvantage. Their head wasn't in this game. This was a game you should have been up for, regardless if you had to play it Monday night after Sunday. It's a huge game for the division, your division rivals. You just beat them at home. They were, they're literally, Seattle Seahawks were literally limping into this game with no momentum back against the wall. And you didn't even match their intensity at any point in this game. I tweeted out after the first half. I said, it would be nice. Actually, it was after the Drake Kirkpatrick penalty. And I said, Cardinals need to step up and match the intensity of the Seahawks. They never did. It was just like, ho-hum, it's just another game. They didn't match their intensity at all. So that's the penalties that cost the Cardinals. Of course, they had a lot more. But record number of penalty yards. All right, we spent enough time on that. It needs. Uh, hopefully, we don't ever see that again. If we see that again, I might fall onto the uh, uh, Cliff Kingsbury needs to go bandwagon. You know, the seat is warm bandwagon. That's unexcusable. That's coaching 101 right there. The other thing I want to say about it, about the defense here on the negative side, 
And it's hard, man. He's done a good job for the Cardinals. Heck of a cornerback in his day. But Patrick Peterson needs help. Yeah, he shut down DK Metcalf was a month ago when they played here. Yeah, he has games where he does it. But he got burned by Cole Beasley when there was one-on-one coverage last weekend against the Bills. He needs help. They swing help over to Drake Kirkpatrick's side. They need, he needs help on that side. He needs help covering a receiver. He's not getting any help. He's being left on an island. He doesn't have the speed he has. He's laying off of the receivers, and they're just beating him because they're faster right now. He doesn't have – he had closing speed in the past when he was younger. He does not have closing speed anymore like he did. And he's getting beat. He's getting beat in situations that you should not leave him alone in. And they insist on leaving him on that island. I get it. It's Patrick Peterson. I get it. It's obvious he's missed a step. It's obvious he's slowed down. It's obvious he can't always cover speedy guys anymore. He needs help out there. There isn't an issue with him losing a step. There isn't an issue with him being slower out there. But this defense just continues to leave him on an island. And it's costing this defense. It absolutely is costing them. They're doing a disservice not only to Patrick Peterson, but they're doing a disservice to the defense, and they're doing a disservice to the offense on this team. Get somebody, figure out a system, figure out a design to get Patrick Peterson help in, in, in getting on these receivers, on these man-on-man coverage. Get out of it. Get him some help over there so he can have some help and not get burned from guys running past him. Has to be done. Absolutely has to be done. It's obvious he needs help out there. We all see it. So you know the Cardinals coaching staff sees it. You know Vance Joseph sees it. Figure it out. Get it done. So those are the negatives. And they're huge negatives, right? I know. We don't like to be negative in here. But those are such glaring problems in this game that we had to discuss them. We had to harp on them. We had to be disgusted by them. We had to relive them. And for that, I apologize. But like I said, on the positive side, despite how we well, despite what we just went through, the Cardinals had a chance to tie the game late. They had the ball last for the most part. They fought to the end, even with all these issues. Kyler Murray got hurt in this game. It came out uh, today that it's his AC joint, but he obviously wasn't comfortable. He had problems throwing the ball at times, and he still fought through it. They changed the offense. He couldn't run as much. And they were still in this game against a team that is really, really good. That's a huge positive. Can't lose focus of that. I know this negative. I saw headlines today in local papers saying, are the Cardinals really good? Is it a mirage? That talk needs to end. The Cardinals team is good. Are they perfect? No. They're inconsistent. We talked about it at the halfway point. They're absolutely inconsistent. This game was an inconsistent game. They were hurt, short week. Kyler Murray was hurt. That defense played well for a defense that lost players on that front seven last week. Pivotal players. They had sacks from guys we didn't even know their names. When they got that first sack of the game, you know they were looking at things going, who is that? Because it's not somebody you've ever said a name before on. That's a positive, guys. No turnovers is a huge positive with how they played. Another positive is Larry was involved in the offense. That's absolutely a positive. He gets forgotten about a lot. He doesn't get those easy passes very much. D-Hop was off last night. He was the focus of that Seattle defense last night. They wanted to shut him down like they shut, like the Cardinals shut down DK Metcalf three weeks ago, whatever it was, and they were successful. D-Hop didn't get a lot of passes thrown his way, Right? So, it was great to see Larry in there, even though they threw the ball a billion times, right? 42, of course. We already talked about that. But, I mean, Larry Fitzgerald, eight catches. Led the team with eight catches, 62 yards on 10 targets. DeAndre Hopkins, five receptions, 51 yards on eight targets. Christian Kirk, four catches, 50 yards, six targets. Chase Edmonds got some balls, four for 36 with one touchdown. Of course, that was a beautiful wide-open touchdown. I don't know how Seattle forgets to cover the running back, but they did. 
Kenyon Drake, four catches, 31 yards on five targets. Even Max Williams, we talked about that, had that big touchdown or big play across the middle, excuse me. Two, pay, two catches, 29 yards, and Dan Arnold had that one for the touchdown there early. And Andy Isabella, one for six. The only reason to talk about Andy Isabella is late in that game. He just didn't fight for that ball good enough that it went incomplete. He needs to go up and get that thing. He needs to, he needs to get that killer edge like Larry and Hopkins has. Get up there and get it. Don't wait for it to come down to you so the defender can bat, bat it away from you. Go up and get it, Andy. Go. Get it. Pretend it's a burrito or whatever you, your favorite food is up there. Pizza. And go get it. Go get yours. Go get it. But he didn't. But Larry getting involved in the offense is a positive. And then the guy we want to talk about on the defense. Fantastic. Positive as can be here. A lot of people were mad. Cardinals wasted a, te- a high draft pick on him. He's not the guy. Why isn't he playing more? Coaches said he wasn't ready. Because he's ready now. Isaiah Simmons has slowly been getting better. He had the interception last time they played the Seattle Seahawks in overtime. So they get the ball back. Best defensive guy they had on the field last night on Thursday night. Isaiah Simmons, nine tackles, one assist, one sack. Of course, that was early. We talked about that. Two tackles for loss. Fantastic. Isaiah Simmons is becoming the ball player we all hoped he was when they drafted him. So much so, uh, uh, Pro Football Focus had some observations from the uh, game last night, and this is what they say about Isaiah Simmons. Isaiah Simmons looked the part during the game. Pro, fo- Pro Football Focus agreed with that assessment. Simmons earned the highest defensive grade on the team at 72. He secured above average marks in run defense, coverage, and pass rush while playing a season high 45 snaps. Isaiah Simmons is coming into his own and being the player we want him to be. Fantastic. What we want to see from him, he's coming in there. It's great to see. I want to make sure we give him the props on the defensive side. We always look at field goals on this uh, podcast, at the length of them, what the situation is setting him up and all that. Well, good news is we don't have to because there was no field goal attempts by either team in this game. So, but he was three for three on extra points. So, you know, there we go, right? Time of possession. Let's wrap this up by talking time of possession. I'm going to go through some stats here. These are bad. This is just baffles you. Total first downs. Cardinals 24, Seattle 22. Cardinals of those uh, 24 uh, first downs, five rushing touchdowns, 17 passing touchdowns. It's not a shocker. Cardinals passed the ball a lot more than they did run it. That's what happens. Seattle, eight rushing touch first downs. Seattle, or Seattle 12 passing touch or first downs. Excuse me. Right. All right. Net yards total. Cardinals 314. Seattle 347. Pretty equal game, right? These stats show it's an equal game. Total offensive plays. Cardinals 63. Seattle 62. Pretty even. We're pretty even here. Stats are pretty dang even. Oh, no, they're not. Net rush, net yards rushing, Cardinals 57. Seattle 165. Seattle getting Hyde back was a huge improvement for them, and it shows there, right? Total rushing plays, Cardinals 18, Seattle 31. Uh-oh. A lot of uh, rushing plays by Seattle compared to the 18 by the Cardinals, and five of those was Kyler Murray. Net yards passing, Cardinals 257, Seattle 182. You guys probably have caught on to where I'm going with this. Pretty even game. But the teams went in two different directions. Seattle ran the ball all game. 31 rushes. Cardinals 18. Time of possession. Cardinals defense was out there forever. For them to be in this game at the end is amazing. Time of possession, Cardinals, 24 minutes and 53 seconds. Seattle, 35-07. 11, 11 minute time of possession difference. That Cardinals defense was out there way too long. 
when Seattle had failed drives, they'd have the ball for two, three minutes on offense because they were running it. Cardinals, 30 seconds, a minute, minute and a half. That's not enough time for your defense to rest and get a strategy to go back out there and game plan. It's not at all. That's on coaching. That's on play calling. So to break it down again, we already went through it a little bit, but just to reiterate, Cardinals, 39 seconds, first drive, punt. Second drive, 2 minutes, 12 seconds, punt. They ran the ball once there, threw it another time. The touchdown drive, 2 minutes, 52 seconds. So even their 8-play, eight, eight 50-yard touchdown drive wasn't a ton of time. Next drive, punt, 4 minutes, 43 seconds, 8 plays, 43 yards. All right, took some time off the clock. Sweet. 8 plays, 43 yards. Next possession, 3 plays, 7 yards. Guess what? 37 seconds off the clock. And then the Seahawks go down and score at the end of half there. Beginning of the third quarter, Cardinals get the ball. Four minutes, 53 seconds off the clock. They score that touchdown, right? Next drive, fantastic start to the third quarter for the Cardinals. 15 plays, 105 yards. Seven minutes and one second of total time off the clock. Sweet. Third quarter, 13, 14 total minutes of game ball time. Keep the ball out of Seattle's hands. Two touchdowns. Boom. That's what the Cardinals need to do, right? Fourth quarter, 11 seconds for that safety play. So the Seattle starts with the punt in the first fourth quarter. Three minutes, 56 seconds off the clock. Cardinals get the ball back, 11 seconds. Not only that, give up two points and send their defense right back out there. Then Seattle gets the ball back, 6 minutes, 53 seconds for a field goal. Cardinals get the ball back, and this is where, of course, the sack at the end of the game on fourth down, minute 45 off the clock. That's the difference right here, right? Seattle commanded the play clock, kept the ball out of the offensive hand, kept them from getting in rhythm on the Cardinals offense, kept them from getting in rhythm, kept them off the field, and it showed during this game. This is what winning teams do. Seattle, 6 minutes, 15 seconds to begin the game drive. Even on a failed punt, on a punt play, 209. On another punt play, 202. On the touchdown drive, 524. On another punt, minute 50. On the field goal to end the half, minute 17. On a touchdown drive in the third quarter between the Cardinals' two touchdowns, 4 minutes, 47 seconds. In the fourth quarter, a punt, 3 minutes, 56 seconds. On that field goal drive, 6 minutes, 53 seconds. Do you see any minutes in there? Do you see any 39 seconds in there for the Seattle Seahawks? Nope. You can see where these games were lost. For the Cardinals to be in this game and down by 7, that defense played pretty darn well for how tired they must have been being out there. You can't expect the defense to stay fresh if they're on the field so much. That's why we focus on the time of possession every game. So penalties, lack of offensive play calling, lack of sustainable drives to get your defense out there to game plan and rest cost the Cardinals in this game. Absolutely. So post game, as I said, Kyler Murray hurt his shoulder. It's an AC joint injury. After the game, he said he was okay. He's got 10 days to heal. Should heal up pretty good. Other injuries in the game. Jalen Thompson, who just came off of IR a couple weeks ago, left the game. Carted off the field. Looks like a serious injury. I didn't hear any updates today, but it doesn't look good. Kenyon Drake did have his leg wrapped in the second quarter, but he did come out after halftime and still, uh, still played in the game. So just a disappointing game for the Cardinals. I get it. Seattle's good. Cardinals should have, could have come in there and won that game. I expect them to. I picked it. A lot of issues. Got to clean that up. Uh, according to Pro Football Focus, the Cardinals' thin defensive front did a solid job getting pressure on uh, Russell, which was a concern, and they did it. However, they couldn't stop the run. As I said, Pro Football Focus even noticed that Patrick Peterson wasn't effective. He allowed four or six targets to be completed for 73 yards. And then, of course, the 46-yard penalty. 
They do give props to DJ Humphreys and Justin Pugh as well for pass blocking performances. Humphreys allowed two pressures, but no sacks and 49 pass protection snaps. Pugh did not allow a pressure, hurry, or sack on his 49 pass blocking snaps. Of course, uh, we talked about that. Pugh was whistled for holding and false start penalties. Humphreys had two false start penalties. With no crowd, that's unacceptable. Sloppy game by the Cardinals. They have 10 days to rest. Next up is uh, New England. So next week, I will uh, sit down after New England plays this weekend. We'll do a preview podcast next week for the week 12. So we'll call this the week 11 recap. Appreciate everybody watching. I'm Stephen McCollum. Of course, Cardinals Rewind. Join me every week as we break down the Cardinals games and then also preview the previous week games. I might change to this format where we do the review one and then a preview the next. But I appreciate y'all watching. I know this was kind of a long one. A lot to talk about in that game last night. Absolutely a lot. So I appreciate y'all watching at the main event pod. Of course, we put the show notes on there as well as uh, any announcements we have regarding this. And, of course, my personal Twitter is at SMAC, S-M-A-C 500. We will see you next week when we do the preview for, again, going to New England. Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening.